How's it going, YouTube? Dallas Boy here, back in here with another Pokemon 4th Generation Wi-Fi match. And I'm pretty sure that some of you guys are going on like, 4th Gen? Isn't Pokemon Black and White 2 out today in the USA? And I say to you guys who say that, I feel like uploading some 4th Gen to just, just try to test out this new team I made. And, uh, by the way, this this battle is up is against Ominous Acid 95 He was streaming earlier in the day... And I was actually looking for a 4th Gen OU match on the Smog on Wi-Fi Battle Finder. But I actually went on getting this match at his stream instead. So, uh, yeah. But, taking a look at my team, I kind of made this team around Lucario and Gyarados. Gyarados being a really... Wait, both of them being very good late game cleaners. And stuff. And this team, in my eyes, kind of looks a little bit hyper-offensive in a few ways. But, uh, we'll see how its first run goes. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the battle, and let's get this show on the road! So my opponent's going to be leading off with his Jirachi, and I'm going to be leading off with my Fortress. And I don't know what Jirachi's going to do for a certain, so I'm just going to be sending up spikes. But he actually tricks me a Choice Scarf, which kind of hinders my Fortress, but... And later in the match, it'll also pretty much hinder his Jirachi. But now he goes up, in, comes in, and I'm just going to be setting up my second layer of spikes. And I know that this heat run's going to threaten me out, and he, my own heat run's going to be a pretty obvious switch. So I'm going to be switching into Flygon and take a predicted resistant hit, or possibly an Earth Power. But heat run actually sets up the sub, and I decide to break it with an Earthquake, as he does decide to Toxic me. And here I am j just looking at Heatran as a pretty big threat to my team. So I'm just going to try spamming Earthquake ju just so that this Heatran will die. But he actually knows that I am a, a choice variant of Flygon and goes out into his Rotom, which is not in its appliance form. And this is actually why I don't r run a Rotom appliance in, in any of my teams, because this will tend to happen. But he knows that I'm actually going to be switching out. <laughs> And yells my heat ring with a thunderbolt, and then follows up with another thunderbolt. And this is actually where the the four EVs and um special defense come into play a little bit. I live with 62 after the two thunderbolts, and nail the Rotom with a fire blast. Now his own heat ring is going to be coming in to try to bust me, but it turns out that he told me that he was modest, and fortunately for me, I am a naive natured. Heat ran. Because of that, I actually wind up outspeeding this Heat ran and taking that big threat completely out of here. Now it comes Tyranitar, and I pretty much know that my Heat ran's good as dead, so I'm just gonna be setting up the Stealth Rocks, just letting my Heat ran die, and he's just gonna be going for the Aqua Tail. Kind of a kind of a safe move there, and as you will learn later, that this heat, that that Tyranitar is a choice band variant. Just look at how much damage this Aqua Tail does to a Fortress. Definitely banded damage right there. And as a Fortress, I'm just going to opt to lock myself in an Earthquake, because it's pretty much the best thing I have to hit this team with, from what I've seen. But now we see Celebi, and at, seeing what, how much damage this next Earthquake does, it's pretty much going to provoke me to get the heck on out of here. And although I do run um, 112 attack EVs on this thing because of smog on standards and whatnot. It it's still not doing that much because Delby is pretty dang bulky. So it's just gonna lead me to switch into Gengar to punch an energy ball. Once it being a crit, which kinda hampers my Gengar survivability a little bit, but in the long run it doesn't really matter that much since Gengar is a bit frail and I don't I haven't seen a rapid spinner on his team yet. But now he, he shows me Protect as I go for the Shadow Ball, and this is going to lull him into a sense of security that I could be Choice Locked, and he's going to be sending in his Tyranitar. But I'm going to predict that obvious switch in and nail the Tyranitar with Focus Blast. Fortunately for me, I actually land the hit and take out the Ty Tyranitar and actually expose the uh, Life Orb right there. But yeah, he's kind of useless. For that for uh, right now, but anyways, out comes Jirachi, and I pretty much know that my Gengar is pretty much as good as dead. So I'm just gonna go straight for this Plane Blade just to deal some damage to this Jirachi. 
who winds up taking me out with an iron head following the pain split. But this actually gives me an opportunity to send in my Flygon, and since he knows I've shown him the Earthquake, I know that he's going to be switching out, and he does into this Swampert right here, and I'm going to predict the switch and actually go for the U-turn, so I can get the switch initiative, and I hop the switch into Rick the Gyarados. So, and due to the um, minus one attack this Swampert has, it's probably going to cause him to switch out into something, and... No, he didn't, he didn't switch. I go I go for the Dragon Dance if he tries going going for the Ice Beam, which doesn't do that much damage, actually. And I should know what happens in this battle. I just had it. But anyways, now we opt to switch out. Jirachi comes in, and I think I go for the Waterfall here. Yeah, any move would at this point would have just absolutely destroyed Jirachi, thanks to Gengar's little paint split shenanigans as pretty much its last resort. Now comes Celebi and after the two layers of spikes and one layer of stealth rocks, well one layer of stealth rocks is all you can set up, Celebi is just going to get off of protect. I try to go for stone edge. Protect didn't, didn't really matter that much in the long run, just kind of lengthened the battle a little more. But now I go for stone edge again and fortunately I hit. and. I'm also not sure if Waterfall would have killed him at that point, but eh, who knows. But now his last Pokemon is the Swampert, and he's actually going to be going for, for the Protect here, and this will actually come into a little bit of play, as you will see in the next turn. As this Waterfall fails, I'm going to be following up with another Waterfall, and Swampert is going to be living this hit with a smidge of health, and thanks to to protect, thanks to the protect, he's able to li live the waterfall and take my Gyarados out with Nice Beam. But now I'm, this is actually going to be leading me to expose the last Pokemon on this team. The end game, the Shotgun, the Lucario, who is going to be finishing off this Swampert with a close combat, and that'll be the game. So this this was a pretty fun workout for this team on Assassin. And I did have fun with this match, so uh, rate, comment, sub, and I will see you guys next time!